What's up guys, Cardin Kid here, and today I'm going to challenge myself to do a 10 minute governor delete on a Predator 212. So this is my homie's bike, it's a 1987 Honda CR80. Good little bike, someone swapped a GX into it, which we then swapped out with a Predator. It's not too bad, in desperate need of a torque converter though. And he got a little carried away. And took off the top governor arm without taking out the actual governor arm. So, I gotta tear this motor apart and clean all that out for him real quick. And I want to see how quickly I can do it. A governor delete is one of the easiest and best modifications you can do to one of these motors. It's basically just taking the rev limiter off. It's such a cheap motor that it really doesn't matter. And you can really only blow them if you're laying on it for more than like 2-3 or three minutes at a time. Um, especially if you go ahead and, and get billet parts like the connecting rod and flywheel, this thing becomes a little rocket. What you're going to need to do this is oil to fill it up when you're done, hammer, and either a chisel or a flathead screwdriver to actually pop the governor pin out. 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, and 13 millimeter sockets. These two are just for whichever. Oh, it's a 12. All right, cool. These size ranges, so it could be any of these. A little magnet tool to get any of the debris out of there and to get the little washers from the back of the motor. Some brake cleaner to get all the crap out of there. Gasket maker and a new bolt we're putting in there in place of the governor arm. So, oh, as well as a 10 millimeter wrench. And I've made one of these governor delete videos before, but it was a bit vague on the angle you're supposed to put the governor arm back in. Um, which, if you don't get it right, could cause some serious issues. So I want to kind of redo this, do a little current version after I've done 20 of them, and, you know, refresh you. And quick disclaimer, I don't know if y'all count this as cheating or not, but I am going to drain the oil ahead of time because that takes a little bit. All right, so... Ten minutes, sparks, now. All right, first you're gonna remove the engine shaft nut. And usually you take the master link out of this chain, but of course, for my pleasure, this stupid thing doesn't have a master link. So I'm just gonna have to roll the chain back. Then you're going to take your 10 millimeter and remove all of the crankcase cover bolts. Don't lose those. A good way to get the crankcase off is you can either put a screwdriver in between here and just pry it off, or you can do that with this other little extension piece over here. Work it off carefully, try not to rip that gasket. Oh boy. Are you stuck on one? Great. Well, not including the fact that the cam came with. We'll do 10 minutes. God damn it. Anyways, moving on. I'm trying to do this as fast as possible. It's not going too great. Um, this is part is optional. Remove the oil safety switch because it's just extra junk in there that you don't want. As you can see the push rods fell out so that's going to be a whole other issue to deal with. But I'm not going to deal with that right now so those are going to get out of the way. Now I'm kind of doubting I can do it in 10 minutes but whatever you know. 
Alright, well at least it doesn't look like he caused any damage by removing it and then trying to run it. It'll be fine. Anyway, you can pull that wire through. And then turn your crankcase, or your, sorry, your crankcase. God, I don't know what I'm talking about. Your, connect your crank around. So you can see the governor there in the back. Now normally there would be a little cap on there, but it already fell off, which is a little frightening, but you know. Didn't seem to cause any damage. There's a center pin, a little like thing that wraps around this center pin here. That the key to getting this thing out is just you gotta knock it out with and just pop it out. It might take a couple tries, but don't be too too forceful with it. Is that popped off? Not yet. That should have gotten it. All right, the pin is off. Alright, once that center pin is out, you can start prying this wheel off. Try not to do too much damage to anything else, but it's a messy process. So. Come on, there we go. Come on! Typically you can use pliers. I just forgot to include those in the list, so I'm gonna see if I can do it without. Come on. Little donor arm up and more out of the way. There we go. Governor's out. Go in there with your magnet and pull the little washer that's still back there out. Come on. Hate that thing. Come on. There we go. Make sure there's nothing done in your crankcase. Anything down there will screw it up. Grab some paper towels, clean up as much of the oil as you can. Basically just push the governor arm all the way down as far as it can go. Just working it out. It's pretty much at its max.
There we go. Cool, cool, cool. All right, wipe her down once more. And you're gonna grab your bolt and some gasket maker. All right, and then put a little bit of red Loctite because you really don't want this thing coming out. All right, so technically that's how you do a governor delete. So in most cases you would just slap this cover back on but in the case that um, you gotta redo the push rods and it takes a little bit longer. But I'm calling that time for the governor to delete and then I will add whatever needs to be done for the push rods. But I was pretty smooth. I don't know in the slightest how long that took. It's probably more like 20 minutes. Now the procedure for putting push rods back in is you find so you can thread it up through the bottom and then make sure it's going in so have the have the valve like that and then there's a little divot on the bottom piece where the lifter goes in so you hold the push rod in and there you go so there's one side and these are a pain um, because you have to hold one side while you do the other as well normally if you're doing this with the engine off um you can just tilt the motor back so that they kind of sit back and don't cause too many issues also while you do this make sure you put a little bit of engine oil on all of the parts not too much but just enough Same dealio with the other side. All right, there go both of them. Then, as you can kind of see what I'm doing, I'm holding the two lifters in. Spin the crank arm. There we go. Have your cam. Make sure it's as clean as possible. No gunk on there, but a little bit of... Right. As I was saying, very... Bro! Really hope they stay. Please stay. Please. Don't fall. Take the cam, look for the dot. We'll line up. Okay, there, there, that's it. Let's spin it. Motion. Perfect. So that's how you set your timing. See, people would be thinking performance motors be made in laboratories. This is the real environment. Anyway. Smack her back on there. Take a bit of persuasion. There we go. And as you tighten them, it's gonna be similar to doing a tire or a head so that you don't warp this. Go gradually so it's tight, and then once they're relatively tight, go this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and then just torque them down from there. What I wanted to show you guys is how to run the new throttle setup. Basically, you will go to one of the holes on the throttle arm and then have it run right down onto the butterfly valve on the carburetor. And it works pretty well. I have the same exact system going on on the mini bike. Just to complete the job, I'll throw the chain back on. And don't forget, to fill her back up with about 0 0.6 quarts of 10W30. Oil level's at. Mm. 
nice and full, pretty much to the brim. All right, and there you go. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. I don't think that was 10 minutes, but it was close enough. Um, as I said, one of the best mods you can do to one of these little motors gives it a little bit more horsepower and overall a lot more RPM. The don't run it for a long period of time. In theory, a uh, valve float, which occurs when the valves don't have enough power or time to close before the next revolution of the piston, that will limit it to around, uh, people usually say it can occur anywhere between 48 100 and 5200 rpm which will in theory protect stuff but the, that little dipper on the connecting rod likes to break off and blow up and that is the number one cause so if you want peace of mind i would go ahead and install a billet connecting rod as well but in the meantime that's how to do a real quick and easy free governor delete